good morning or afternoon, uh, depending on where you are today. Uh, welcome to a presentation regarding the history of women at Reclamation. Uh, this is part of a series of events leading up to the 120th birthday of Reclamation on June 17th, 2022. Um, so we are getting closer to that 120th birthday. I'm going to take you through a history of uh, key women at Reclamation uh, starting in the early days and moving through to the present. Uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, current demographics uh, at Reclamation and the uh, special emphasis program for women as well. Uh, so that's our agenda. Uh, there will be time for questions and answers. Um, since this is a live event, we are on a 20 second delay. Uh, so please give us some time uh, to answer any questions. Uh, you can ask the questions using that question mark button at the top right hand corner of your screen. Um, this event is being recorded. Uh, so please keep that in mind if you choose to participate. The Q&A is also recorded. So with that, we will get going. Um, also, please feel free uh, to use that Q&A if you have any questions or even comments. Um, there might be folks in the audience who know more um, about some aspects of the history than I do, or uh, if you know something you'd like to add, just, just feel free to drop it into the Q&A there. Thanks. All right. So our first woman in reclamation history, um, not very well known, um, but she uh, played a really critical role in the federal government um, back in a time when that was practically unheard of. Uh, she was hired in 1915 um, after uh, getting a one year long uh, college certificate in sternography. Um, back then, there were only a few positions. I didn't know this. Uh, there were only a few positions that women were allowed to hold in the federal government. Uh, from what I understand, uh, this was before our modern day classification system. There were uh, exams you had to sit for or something like that in order to get positions. And most of them were off limits to women at this time. Um, over 90% of the women in the federal government worked in clerical type roles back then. Um, and as you can see, uh, her starting salary was $720 per year. Um, I know on the Federal Employment Viewpoint Survey, uh, one of the points that people always bring up is they feel they do not get paid enough uh, for the work they do. So uh, putting things into perspective there. Um, that was her starting salary. Um, I also thought it was really interesting. Uh, you can see her career progression just in her first eight years. Um, you know, these days, uh, young people get a bad rap for job hopping too much or, you know, not sticking one place for very long. Um, and May Schnoor moved to one, two, three, four, five, six different offices in her first eight years of her career before she settled down somewhere. Uh, so just a nice reminder that um, younger people at the beginning of their careers have in fact been moving from position to position even since the 1910s. Um, so she started out um, doing sternography and as a clerk, uh, she got hired eventually uh, as the secretary to uh, Commissioner Mead, um, and they developed a very close friendship. Um, she became an associate editor of the New Reclamation Era, a publication at the time. Uh, she used that to really highlight uh, the role that uh, women played in rural farms, um, rural farms, <laughs> farms at the time, Western farms. Um, the critical piece that they played in, in farm life and in keeping um, farm communities going. Um, she also got uh, named secretary of many different commissions in that time. Um, she got to travel to Denmark to represent the Department of Interior. 
um, as part of a cooperative farm study. Um, and then she was, um, this was a position that was pretty much invented uh, for her. Uh, the commissioner wrote an email, not an email, uh, a letter to the Secretary of the Interior uh, back then and said that he would like to um, appoint her to be the assistant to the commissioner. Um, and uh, it was approved. So this was a very high level position. It had some administrative tasks involved, but it also had uh, a lot of attending meetings um, and, and really playing a key role in helping to shape policy. Um, and she also frequently acted for the commissioner uh, quite regularly when, when he was uh, out on business. So um, pretty much unheard of at the time to have a woman in such a high level role. Uh, back then, typically you only had women leaders in uh, agencies such as like the Women's Bureau, or uh, I think there was an agency dedicated to children, that sort of thing. Uh, so for a woman to be running things uh, in the 1920s, uh, having to do with water and farming, uh, really, really, really unusual. Um, we have a question, would be interesting to know what cave that picture was taken in. I'm super curious too. Um, we do have Andrew here, our historian. Um, if he knows, maybe he can type it in. If not, I will look it up and get back to you because I'm curious also. All right. Do you know Andrew? Yeah, do you, Laura, you want me to take that? Um, if, if memory serves, <laughs> um, this picture was taken in Calaveras uh, Caverns uh, in New Mexico. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right. So another really interesting piece of history here, uh, 1918. Um, as I'm sure you can imagine, we're talking World War I. Uh, a lot of folks at war, uh, labor shortages, and women were asked to uh, fill in for roles that at the time were traditionally male dominated. Uh, so this is a, a survey crew. Uh, we don't have the names, unfortunately. Uh, an all female crew. Uh, Pretty funnily, the uh, history on the project says it was one party of girls. Uh, obviously, now they would be women, but I thought that was a funny characterization. Um, and the reports also indicated that they were a great crew and that they uh, performed really well. Um, I love the outfits. Um, similarly, uh, same project, uh, 1918. Um, female power plant operators. Um, here's a photo of three. Uh, we have the names. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing them correctly. Riva Moore, Fern Fulmer, and Luella Wixom. Um, as uh, <laughs> 18 people apparently applied when, when an announcement went out uh, for female power plant operators. Uh, five of them were selected. Two were still employed at the end of the year. Um, so yeah, just, just a really interesting piece of history. I think my favorite part of this photo here is the uh, weapons they were carrying. Um, not fully sure what that has to do with the um, power plant operating, but still uh, pretty neat. Um, and again, really fun uniforms. All right. Our next character um, in reclamation history, uh, Lucy Pettipis. Um, she was a Florida native, a much different climate out there. Uh, she was really intrigued with the challenges and um, complexity of bringing, you know, irrigation to the American West. She studied as uh, a civil engineer at the University of Texas, um, and she took her first job 
with uh, reclamation at Great Falls, Montana. Um, I'm not sure definitively if she was the first female engineer, but she was definitely uh, up there as one of the first. Uh, fun fact, she had to look at a map uh, to figure out where the position was that she had just accepted. Um, so must have been quite the adventure for her. Um, and she was in 1976, the first female leader of uh, Project's office. Um, so first person to get into that leadership uh, role with the engineering side of things, operations um, back in the day. Uh, she also served as the president of the Montana section of the American Society of Engineers. Um, let's see. I'm just looking at the comments. Yeah, $720 in today's money would be more like $20,000. Uh, a lot more money, but still would be hard to live on, especially uh, depending on where they lived. Uh, all right. Oops. Can everyone still see me? Something went a little wonky. All right. So fast forward, um, Marianne Bach, um, she was the first uh, female um, regional director with the Bureau of Reclamation uh, in 1998. I found it really interesting. Um, she has a master's degree in plant ecology, um, different sort of background than uh, I think what you would typically uh, see with the engineering and everything. Um, she had worked with the uh, House of Representatives um, prior to um, joining Reclamation. Um, then she started as a deputy regional director, um, which was then the Great Plains region, uh, Missouri Basin region now, um, and became the regional director there. Uh, she then continued uh, to work in research and development, uh, technical resources, and was acting director of safety, security, and law enforcement for a period also. Um, really coming full circle because the first time um, I hosted one of these reclamation-wide events when the pandemic had first began and we were all remote, uh, she was actually the uh, speaker for that one. Um, she was our guest. Uh, and we were on WebEx because we hadn't figured out Teams yet. Uh, and there was a whole bunch of beeping cutting off the commissioner um, because we had hit some button incorrectly. So a little trip down memory lane, uh, pulling up Marianne Bach. Uh, we've come a long way. Uh, fun fact, uh, she is now um, in the Denver metro area as a uh, wellness coach. All right. Uh, Moving along, another uh, regional director, uh, Lori Gray. Um, she started um, as a regional director in 2007, Lower Colorado, uh, and then has been the regional director of Columbia Pacific Northwest uh, since 2012. Um, but well before being a regional director, uh, she actually started out as an administrative assistant um, almost 40 years ago. So uh, just really cool to see all the different backgrounds uh, that Reclamation has really given the uh, opportunity to grow and you know develop into these um, executive level positions. Um, so you don't need to be an engineer. Um, it's 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 just neat to see. Um, to see all the histories and the backgrounds here. Um, then, of course, we have Commissioner Berman uh, was the first female commissioner um, of reclamation. Um, she was a uh, graduated from law school, University of Arizona, um, and then she uh, worked as an attorney uh for a while um within um the political side of things uh served doi i think it was assistant secretary or deputy assistant secretary for um uh, parks and uh fish and wildlife if, if i'm remembering correctly somebody let me know if i'm not 
um, under the George W. Bush administration. Um, I think also had a short stint or acclamation then. Um, and then after the George W. Bush administration uh, worked at the Nature Conservancy, Metropolitan Water District of Southern California and the Salt River Project. Um, obviously, then she came back uh, to reclamation um, under the Trump administration um, and was here until very recently. A uh, fun fact about Commissioner Berman, um, she had also worked as a volunteer uh, trail crew member and as a park ranger um, prior to her um, professional career. Uh, we also wanted to recognize uh, Denver office um, leaders, uh, female leaders in the Denver office. Uh, we have quite a few. Um, so wanted to point them all out as well. Um, Liz, I believe technically her last day was yesterday, um, but when I made the slides, she was still here. Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, in our Washington office today, um, we have Camille as our deputy commissioner um, in a key role here, um, so wanted to highlight her as well. Um, aside from our female executives, uh, we have quite a few um, female area managers across Reclamation, um, also playing really critical roles. Um, I think we've captured them all, but please, if anybody knows of one who is not on this list, um, please feel free to add them to the chat and I will recognize them that way. Um, again, very key challenging roles and a ton of uh, great female leadership uh, contributing to them today. Aside from our uh, leadership roles, I uh, also just wanted to recognize at Reclamation today, we have so many um, occupations where um, our female representation is higher than what you see in the United States workforce um, as a whole. Um, of course, we don't have the 2020 data yet. Um, it's it's still being compiled, but based off the 2010 census data, engineers uh, especially uh, are represented here at almost double the rate that you see in uh, the United States workforce as a whole. Uh, you can see all those stats here. Um, human resources too. Uh, I wanted to give them a shout out because uh, none of us could do anything that we do without them. Um, and they also uh, have a very high number of women uh, really just keeping everything moving and uh, keeping reclamation operating. Um, also accounting and contracting, uh, we did have more women than uh, the overall workforce. Um, so I wanted to highlight that also. Um, so, you know, just some interesting pieces of our demographics today. Um, that concludes my overview of women at reclamation. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Carrie Dyrell, who is our women's special emphasis program coordinator, uh, to talk a little bit about what she does in the in the special emphasis program. Great. Thanks, Laura, so much. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks again. Uh, uh, to Laura for letting me do a shout out here very briefly. My name, as she said, is Carrie DeRoll. I am the Special Emphasis Program Manager for the Denver Office's Federal Women's Program. And my day job is working out of the policy office, uh, but this role is a collateral duty uh, that's really focused on 
hosting special observances like Women's History Day, Women's Equality Day, uh, those events that increase cultural competence and promote inclusion in the workplace, uh, as well as educating supervisors, managers, employers on barriers that are faced by federally employed women, uh, including strategies for overcoming those barriers. Uh, we also uh, focus on providing training and informational resources uh, and enhancing outreach for improved uh, recruitment uh, and retention of women in reclamation's workforce. Uh, our reclamation special emphasis programs are really a critical part of uh, our broader diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts as a bureau. And uh, I really appreciate advancing our equal opportunity employment programs, uh, program goals and objectives, uh, and being a part of making reclamation a great place to work for women. So I would encourage all of you to get engaged with your region's civil rights office uh, to attend special observances, uh, as well as the Denver office's observances, which are often open to all reclamation employees. Uh, and additionally, we're always looking for folks who would be interested in helping out with our events. Um, you know, for example, on this slide, we've got an image of uh, this this year's Women's History Month program that Reclamation hosted. Um, we have been really fortunate to have large and engaged audiences for these events, uh, so much so that we're often told, uh, you know, we want more time for Q&A, we want more time to engage with the guest speakers. Additionally, if you're looking for other ways to get engaged, uh, you know, always looking for folks to provide ideas or ways to improve reclamation um, or even to serve as a special emphasis program manager in that collateral duty role. So I serve as a special emphasis program manager for the federal women's program, but we have these programs for uh, a variety of historically underrepresented groups, such as uh, American Indian and Alaska Natives, uh, as, in, as well as individuals with disabilities and more. Uh, and so with that, that's my pitch for you to get engaged with your civil rights office uh, and um, you know, step outside of your everyday work activities and join us in celebrating and expanding our you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts here at the Bureau. Thanks. Thank you so much, Carrie, for, for that piece. Um, we have a bunch of comments um, also taking questions at this time. Um, it looks like somebody thinks that the um, that they were Minidonka power plant guards uh, during World War One. Uh, Andrew, would that would that line up rather than them being power plant operators or uh, what are your thoughts there, Andrew? Well, according to the project history for 1918, they're identified as power plant operators. Um, while they're, why they are packing, I really don't know. Uh, um, other than the fact that Reclamation did have um, guard services during the war at all its major facilities, and that may have been a collateral duty. The, like I said, the project um, history does not tell us why <laughs> these these women were um, were wearing firearms, but um, they they are listed as power plant operators according to the project history. Thank you for that. That would make sense. Um, we have some comments from Dina. Um, please do not forget Shannon Cunniff, um, who was also acting head of research and development in the 1990s. Thank you for that. Um, and yes, uh, we have had many uh, Reclamation Engineers of the Year um, who have been uh, women. Um, I've uh, worked with Public Affairs to, uh, we highlighted them as part of our, uh, I think it was on our social media, yeah, on the social media for Women's History Month. Uh, you can check those out and learn more about them there. Um, Jennifer Bountry, um, and I think we have some others. Um, Ned Brunhagen um, asks, do you have an estimate of women in the environmental field? Um, I'm going to 
ask <laughs> Chris and Carrie um, if off the top of your head you have any sense or if that's, I, I'm not sure if we have that occu those occupations specifically broken out for our reporting purposes, um, but I can certainly look at that. Um, anecdotally, I suspect it's a pretty high number just having worked with folks. Um, Carrie, do you have any sense or we, we, we can look into that and get back to you? Yeah, we can definitely check it out. I know Reclamation has a lot of technical disciplines outside of engineering that are well represented uh, by women, but the exact sort of breakdown we would have to get back to you on. All right. Uh -huh. Oh, here we go. Uh, Dina also provided the other names of uh, the female engineers of the year from the TSC, uh, Jennifer Bountry, Marquetta McGuire, Lisa Fotherby. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's true too. Uh, John Shields says many of the assistant secretaries uh, for water and science in recent years have been women. Um, that is also correct. Um, any other questions or comments? Um, I know um, it, it was reserved for an hour. Um, I think it'll be more of a 30 minute presentation, um, but if anyone else has any uh, questions or comments before we close out, uh, I'll give it just another 20 seconds to come through. Otherwise, um, please stay tuned for um, additional events. Uh, again, as part of the uh, 120th birthday uh, celebration of reclamation that we are leading up to um, next year. All right, well, I'm not seeing any more questions. So thank you all for uh, coming by and uh, please keep your eyes out for uh, additional 120th birthday events. Thanks so much.